All right, hopefully I'll get the mic right this time. Several people I've talked to have claimed Emmerich de Vittel's book, The Law of Nations, as a reference text for understanding different parts of the U.S. Constitution. Now, this book is most commonly referenced when discussing the citizenship requirements for President of the United States. So I decided to do some research and figure things out for myself. And, of course, I wanted to share it with you. So we'll do that next on the Constitution Study. Well, hello there, everyday Americans. Paul Engel here with the Constitution Study, where we read and study the Constitution and teach the rising generation to be free. I'm glad you could join me today. As always, head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. It's where you'll find it. everything we're working on. Uh, you can get updates on the book. The book is in process. We have a tentative launch date. I'll be making an announcement on that soon. Uh, you can find out where I'm speaking. You can even invite me to come speak at one of your groups. Most of all, you'll find reference material that not only can you use to educate yourself, point yourself to other resources, but to share with others. And that's probably the biggest thing we want to do right now is take this information about what the Constitution actually says and share it with friends, family, online associates. Let's get people thinking again what the Constitution actually says and then using that to help make their decisions. That's the goal of what we're trying to do here. As always, I want to thank everybody that helps make this, this podcast, and in fact, everything I do, happen. From the people who let me use their music, to people who share uh, the, the resources, to people who just encourage me to make this continue uh, when things get a little slow and difficult. Most of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch, to listen, those of you who read the material to read it, and especially those of you who take that and share it. So let's talk about the Law of Nations. Now, as I said, I usually see Fattel's book brought up in reference to the qualifications for President of the United States, specifically the definition of a natural-born citizen. Come to think of it, I think that's the only time I've heard Vitell's book referenced in relation to the Constitution. Now, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution states, no person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this Constitution shall be eligible to, to the office of president. See, it's important to understand what is a natural-born citizen. Now, according to the Law of Nations, quote, the natives or natural-born citizens are those born in the country of parents who are citizens. So we really need to ask the question, is the law of nations legally binding reference in determining the meaning of words in the Constitution? Now, to answer this, we must look at three different things. Is the law of nations referred to in the Constitution? Was it referenced during the debates about the Constitution? And finally, is there a simpler explanation of the term natural born citizen? Now, I've read and studied the Constitution for many years, and I have never seen the book The Law of Nations referred to in the document. Okay, to be fair, I've never seen any other text directly referred to in the Constitution. Now, someone the other day claimed that it appears in Article 1, Section 8. So I took a look. And Article 1, Section 8, Clause 10 says, to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the law of nations. This idea that this is referring to the book Law of Nations is most commonly supported by the fact that the term Law of Nations is used as a proper noun since it's capitalized in the original text. But does this mean the authors were referring to Vattel's book? Now, even Vattel refers to the Law of Nations as rights and obligations of sovereign states. The law of nations is a law of sovereigns. Free and independent states are moral persons whose rights and obligations we are to establish in this treatise. So it seems the term law of nations was commonly used at the time to describe a set of laws, both natural and those established by treaty between sovereign states. Now this is reinforced by the context of the clause from the Constitution, talking about crimes committed outside of the United States. Now, if we look at other parts of the Constitution and how capitalization is used, it's easy to say that, you know, 
the language here does not apply to a specific document. It is referring to this concept, Law of Nations. Next, I searched the debates of the Continental Congress. Now, my search included all of the records from the Congress from 1774 through 1789, both for the terms Law of Nations and for Vittel. What I found was the most predominant use of the term Law of Nations was in reference to international law. Now, I did find some correspondence about acquiring copies of Vittel's book, along with a few instances of Vittel being either read or used as an example. Uh, there was even one where Vittel was either being quoted directly or where it was assumed that what something someone said was an idea coming from his work. So Vittel was definitely in the mix, shall we say. However, none of these references are related to the qualifications for president or the term natural born citizen. What I did find was a committee report of a list of books to be used by Congress. And the Law of Nations was included, although it was mistitled Vattel's Law of Nation, Nature and Nations. But is that the only place we go for a definition of the term natural born citizen, or at least where the founders did? You see, Vattel says that for a person to be a natural born citizen, they have to be born on U.S. soil of two U.S. citizens. But Blackstone, another resource used frequently in the debates, says that for the father to be a citizen, technically a subject, because Blackstone was talking about British law, but for a child to be a citizen, only the father had to be a citizen, regardless of their place of birth. So while Vattel's definition may have been what our founding fathers considered when they wrote the Constitution, there's no proof of the fact. And with other definitions coming from other sources we do know were used, it's hardly a slam dunk to say that Vattel is a standard we should be using. So with ambiguity in the language of the Constitution, and with no real answer in the debates about the Constitution, and assuming that the simplest answer is usually the best, I looked for that simple answer to our question. Now, both Vattel and Noah Webster, whose dictionary I use quite frequently as a reference, they both agree that a natural-born citizen could also be termed a native citizen. The Law of Nations says the native or natural-born citizens are those born in a country of parents who are citizens. Noah Webster says that natural means a native or original inhabitant, and native means conferred by birth as native rights and privileges. So if native means conferred by birth, then it can be inferred that a natural-born citizen or a native citizen is one who is a citizen at birth as opposed to one being granted citizenship later in life. So is the definition of natural born citizen from the law of nations legally binding on the Constitution? While it is true, Vattel was read by some of the delegates who debated the Constitution and was occasionally referenced. There is no evidence that his book was considered to be definitive in any sense of the word. The law of nations was included in a list of books proper for the use of Congress but I find no evidence that it was referenced in the debates about the qualifications for president. In fact, there are other resources, including different definitions for the term, that were used by the delegates. So with no solid definition of the term natural-born citizen in the Constitution, and with differing definitions and possible supporting references, we're left with only one way to define the term, natural law. Now, since natural laws are, by definition, laws so obvious they don't need to be written down. I believe the best definition for the term natural born citizen is the simplest, that of a child who is a citizen at birth. To be a citizen at birth, one must be the child of a parent or parents who are citizens of the United States. I see no requirement that that child be born on U.S. soil. This is supported by the debates around the 14th Amendment recognizing not only geography, but jurisdiction is being necessary to citizenship. I'll put a link to my article on uh, birthright citizenship in the description below. So therefore, the standard we should use for qualification for president is a person who was born a citizen, not one who received their citizenship later in life. Now, if you have any evidence that Vattel's Law of Nations was used as a standard when Congress debated the citizenship requirements, please let me know. Put it in the comments below. Contact me through the website. Hey, 
I've done a lot of study on this and a lot of research, but it's certainly possible I missed something. But if you want to change my mind, you must bring me real evidence. Not hearsay, not supposition, or what someone else wrote. Your evidence has to be good. It has to be based on, on actual documents from the founding era. And not simply inferences that said, well, the law of nations is stated here, so that must be in the book. Now, if your evidence is good, I may even have you on the podcast to show off your work. So what do you think? Have you ever given much thought to why we have the qualifications for president that we do? And have you really thought about what does it mean to be a natural born citizen? Is this work by Vettel new to you and something you haven't even thought about? See, we're going to have an election next year, so it's pretty important that we actually know what the qualifications are for the person we're putting in office. Mostly, again, I hope it made you think about what these things are. I hope you'll share it with others. Share the video, share the audio. There's a text version of this if you want to share that. Let's engage in discussion. Let's engage in understanding. So before we either include somebody or exclude somebody from the possibility of holding the office of president, we make sure we're doing it on sound footing. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll head over to the website, constitutionstudy.com. Hey, I hope you'll sign up for the mailing list. And if you already have, maybe get these videos delivered right to your inbox. Most of all, I hope you not only enjoyed this, but I hope it intrigued you enough that you'll come back and we can discuss these things again next time on the Constitution Study. There's one thing you have to know wherever you make your stay. Came from a long through line of everyday Americans.